Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the General Hospital recap for March 11th through 15th. I am back. I am Yay. tired. <laughs> um, well, that's because you had a very exciting week and then you watched all of GH in one day. So, of course, 10 episodes tired. in one day while I caught up on administrative <laughs> stuff for work. It was great. I, I think that has to be like a, a world record for the two of us. Well, now I'm worried I missed something because so I got home like 10 p.m. Wednesday night, did not do a darn thing on Thursday. Well, I did stuff, but just barely. Um, but I didn't watch anything on Thursday and it was a gorgeous day here. So I sat outside and did work. Um, I actually finished John Lindstrom's book in a day. I started it at my, before my first flight on Wednesday and then I finished it Thursday evening. So I didn't read it like straight through, but it's a really, really good book. And there are several characters in it that have, uh, GH inspired names like Wally. Oh, and one character's last name was Devane. Oh, nice. And one of the bad guys, though, his name was Rocket. And I'm like, hmm, Hmm. who's that? But but yeah, so I don't Leo. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought you meant. Okay, no, no, Um, I don't. But I didn't go. By the time I realized it, whenever I saw Devane, like I had thought about it with Wally, and I was like, oh, John put Wally in here. That's really sweet. And then when I saw Devane, I was like, oh shoot, who else did I miss? I didn't go back and go through it all, though. Yeah. Then, then I realized because Rocket was throughout the the book. I'm like, oh, he made he made my Leo into a bad guy. <laughs> but um, so we have two weeks of Poor Charles pipelines, some from when I was gone. But so I guess we can get started on that. Um, so good day. The reason that it's not Morgan is because of the significance of his death. It shows Carly, Sonny, and Jason the cost of bad choices they have made. It would be like all my children undoing Erica's abortion. I don't know about that, but I agree with the general idea of that. However, they have undone a lot of significant yeah. storylines <laughs> lately. So True. I guess it just wouldn't have surprised me if they had. Um, but also it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have undone the significance of his death because it would have shown he would have rather stayed away than to come yeah. back and right. possibly started, you know, his revenge plot or whatever, right. um, which still shows them the significance of their decisions and things that they make. Uh, this person thinks that it's Lorenzo Alcazar. Ooh. He had government connections and was a gun runner. Yes. He also hated Jason and Sonny. The idea is that Jason killed him, but there was no body found as they do there was also no body found with morgan right it's better as lorenzo because he is tied to so many he is carly's ex-husband sunny's mob rival alexis killed his twin and he is the father of sky chandler quartermain okay it it doesn't say sky's (laughs) daughter Um, yeah so he's the father of lila ray who is sky chandler quartermain's daughter he could be pikeman thank you yeah listen i love lorenzo i would love for him to come back yeah and I guess like a lot of that is redundant now, but oh well. Um, then Angela, I love listening to the show weekly. It's my ease into work Monday morning routine. So this was five days ago. So this would have been after last week's was released. Oh, nice. Um, it's great to know that I'm not the only one looking at GH being like, that's kind of the storylines. <laughs> I just want to tell you how much I love the guys filling in on March 11th. It was so much fun listening to them. Not, not completely in the no take. And what was happening on the show. Maybe they can come back quarterly. Um, From Holly. Oh my God, your cat story. The story (laughs) is insane. Not your cat. Unintentionally hilarious. But I'm pretty angry at the groomer. Jeez. So the second that I saw somebody write in, I snoozed until this week. (laughs) So I'm very glad I didn't read that. Because I did not hear that story until yesterday afternoon. Do you have your cat back? I am asking for an early reality check from you. No, I did not. I checked Facebook and there was no update. <laughs> I do not have Oliver back, but we have acquired this new cat 
because nobody else wants him and he's super nice. And so we are taking him next week and getting him neutered and all his shots. And so hopefully he will let us domesticate him because he he loves all the loves. He just keeps looking out the window like maybe he's still tempted to go out there. And I'm like, don't do that. It's a rough world. So there have been all of our sightings in the neighborhood. So we have a trap out. We are hoping to catch him. Hopefully that will be next week's reality check that he's I was home. going to text you and then I'm like, no, she's probably way saving it. But then I checked <laughs> Facebook and it wasn't there. And I'm like, what the heck? And yeah, that groomer. <laughs> oh, she was so mean to me. She was so mean. Like, I You'll talk tell about me off air who it is. It. Yeah. Question. Is it someone around the corner for me? No. Okay. Okay. Oh, that just, yeah. Um, then Holly wrote in again, Drew is just being a jerk. I don't know what they are trying to do with this character. Actually, lots of people are just being jerks about Jason, but of course I'm biased. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Jason, he's back in the opening as of Wednesday. Thank you for, because I was looking for him and then I kept forgetting to. I was like, I am not going back. (laughs) Holly, thank you so much. Yeah, Holly's got her back. (laughs) What exactly do Marshall and Curtis think would have come from confronting his doctor from 30 years ago? He was misdiagnosed. It happens all the time. Three blissful days without Nina, rant over, smiley face. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't count. That was only four. Did I miss one that I didn't snooze? Oh, yep, I did. Because Holly also messaged us on Monday, March 4th, saying I just glanced at my clock and immediately thought, Jason's back in 90 minutes. Aw. I am, first of all, so glad that it was announced he was coming back at the end of the 60th anniversary. Because I have actually not seen anything else saying that like he was coming back. I know oh, nice. St- I know Steve announced that like his air date was going to be March 4th, but I don't think he would have done that if it hadn't been announced at the end of the right. Right. So if I had not known, I had so many people message me on Monday. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Jason's back. I'm like, mm-hmm, I know, <laughs> but I just shot her back a message saying, I'm not going to be able to watch until I get back. Oh no. I said, I'm, I was definitely going to try to watch tonight. So that's a whole other thing. I basically didn't watch TV for nine days. It was nice. Um, but she said that you'll be missed on this week's podcast. So, oh no, I missed one. Um, this was from February 25th. So yeah, this would have needed. Did I read this one? I'm almost positive that Jason is working with Jagger. Did we read this one? I yes, we did because it says the Morgan theory is where my heart is. I deeply, deeply feel like Jason and Morgan are trying to say, yeah. Okay. I did. I did. I did. I did. Okay. So first of all, and I did text you Jason and JD this yesterday because I watched Jason and JD. Brian and JD. <laughs> I texted the three of you because I watched last week's episodes, then listened to the podcast. JD's acting like he doesn't know who these people are. I know. I called him out on it. It was like, dude, I know you know more than you're letting on. Like, I know you did. That's why I text you. And I was like, <laughs> by the way, Amanda, thank you. <laughs> um, and I think that, oh, this is why, because I was just reading my notes. I think that JD thought, that Jason's real name was Steve because of he knows that he's known as Stone Cold. JD's also into wrestling, so Stone Cold Steve Austin. Ah, uh, okay. That so makes I think sense. that's where the confusion was because he knows that it's Stephen Bradford. Yeah, like, he knows that. So I think it yeah. was just all the the Stone Cold. Yeah, I was okay the- with him not not knowing Steve's name. Well, you do um, that all the time. We all do it, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I was impressed with Ryan for knowing uh, Lydia. Look, I was like, wow, you go, but yeah. Yeah, whenever JD was like seeming a little lost on the storyline, I'm like, I know you're not as lost as you're letting not on here, dude. He doesn't know who Laura is. Yeah, I was like, dude, no, no, you're not playing <laughs> dumb. I'm calling BS. <laughs> uh, and then JD brought up that he was he suggested that Jason have a long lost twin. He's like, and this guy's name will be Mark. You never mentioned that Drew is Jason's long lost twin. <laughs> you're right i didn't i I was waiting for it because i'm like with triplets but that's what i was waiting for i was waiting for the oh but oh but you're actually right that's true that (laughs) happened the last time we thought jason died (laughs) right right well just the last time jason died and we got drew but he was john doe brother every time he disappears (laughs) jake doe yeah um i also make my passwords like ryan where oh good job um, you have the letters turn into different symbols because Maximista was really too easy. Uh, I was laughing this week about um, 
Michael's phone password, one, two, three, four, one, two. And I was like, right. <laughs> right. JD and Ryan not understanding that women have a friend that they would grab a shovel for with no questions asked. I am so thankful you did not tell them that we are each other's. Like, <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I totally was appalled because I'm like, you know, we all have that one friend and they're both like, uh uh-uh. uh. And I'm like, really? Men like, do you have- not realize that all we really have to do is be like, listen, no question, just just come here. And I'm like, okay, hey, please bring your shovel. All right, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Okie doke. <laughs> um, it was interesting during the reality check where my husband tap danced around the fact that my son being there basically replaced me have like with some of my running around and everything that had to be done. So it's like, Oh, he, he nice. Out with the fact that he has two people living here or our son was home for spring break. So he had him and his car and my aunt had my car. Oh yeah. So he had a lot of extra resources that I don't have <laughs> <laughs> when we have our day-to-day lives it's yeah it's me <laughs> right and it's me <laughs> with one car <laughs> with one car drive myself one place <laughs> right but i also have to coordinate with other things um yes. i mean my son does do a lot over the summer i think we talked about this when he went to college where i was like i didn't i've intentionally not tried to rely on him too much for things just because in 30 to 40 years, there's a good chance I'm going to need him to step up. Yeah. So I'd rather that he enjoy himself now and not have that responsibility now. But he does, he does help me out. Uh, He does. He's a good kid. He is. But I don't want him to feel like it's his responsibility. So, oh yeah. And then, oh my gosh, Amanda's cat, Amanda saying the taglines, LOL. (laughs) Because they messed up and didn't know we meet with a peer when... They both listened <laughs> to the they show before. Both know it. Like they both know it. And neither we one of them jumped shirts. on. <laughs> yeah. Like they both know it. it that was funny because I'm like, have a good week. And they both are like, bye. I'm like, what? no. <laughs> like, you know how this goes. <laughs> so, yeah, that was really all of my notes from the podcast episode. I did not take notes from watching GH because. I figured it would just be pointless given this. Right. And, and yeah, I figured if there was something that we missed that you would have caught it and, and mentioned it, but I, I, they did a really good job. Well, they did day by day. So yeah, they've got so, way more detail. I know the podcast was like an hour and a half last week. I was like, that's longer than we normally go. Cause they were breaking it down. We go between an hour, 10 and hour 20. They were like at an hour 30. So, but yeah, it was, it was fun to listen to. They were cute. They did it. They did a good job. But yeah, both of them were acting like they didn't know as much as they do. So yeah. Well, and what, what was Although, really funny, JD oh, did know when he said he was mixing. He was calling Cyrus Silas, and he's like, "Isn't there a Silas?" And you're like, "Well, he's Finn now." He's like, "Oh, vampire doctor cop." Like, <laughs> yes, that's who he, he knows. <laughs> yep, yeah, he instantly got that. Well, it was funny this week. So I had watched Monday, Tuesday, but I didn't remember that I had watched Monday, Tuesday. So today when I was on the way home from Madeline's dance comp, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to watch all of this in time, but I have to have it done to do a Shannon because I'm busy working tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. And so I turned it on and it started on Wednesday and I was like, no, it needs to start on Monday. And then Monday came on. I was like, oh, I already watched all this. And Ryan was like, yeah. We watched Monday and Tuesday the other night. Remember there was that Ghostbuster line that I like said before, uh, before they said it, blah, blah, blah. And remember this. And I was like, you're totally paying attention more than I was apparently because I didn't even remember watching it. So then I was happy. I only had to watch Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Very nice. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. I did not watch anything until yesterday. And then I, <laughs> and then we had kind of talked about switching dates. So we're actually recording on Saturday afternoon. And you text me like yesterday afternoon. And you're like, can you do tomorrow afternoon instead? I'm like, oh my gosh, that's right. And I'm yeah. like, oh, thank goodness. Because I was not going to be ready. I think I finished. Well, I would have, I would have done things differently. Like I would have hurried up. <laughs> yeah. And, and I wouldn't have taken a break no. for dinner. I wouldn't have done this, you know? It's, yeah. And if you would have said no, I would have been like, okay, can we do super early on Sunday or can we do super late on Sunday? Because I thought I was still going to have Sunday off and then my schedule changed. So even whatever time I would have picked with you, I still would have 
ended up messaging you yesterday and being like, yeah, I didn't realize her dance schedule changed. So, so did my work schedule. Fun times. Yeah. Um, so last week, the 411 was the Jerome family. This week, we're doing the Wu family. Woohoo! So we are going to finish the mob. So then I think the following week will be the Corinthos. And then the week after that will be all the minor. Like this. Unfortunately, that's where Faith Roscoe and Alcazar fall in because they were only mm-hmm. on for like a blip. Right. And like at that set time. So like the Woos are from the 80s, called back and then brought back now. The Jerome's 70s or 80s and then brought back. Mm-hmm. Whereas the Alcazars, the Roscoe's, like they were only on that time. Wouldn't it be great, although we'll get to it, if somehow all the mercenaries are all the old mobsters that we thought died? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And Morgan. (laughs) Every time I watch uh, Good Trouble and I see Morgan that's not Morgan on there, I'm like, come on, you're on the wrong show. We got to come back to GH. We need you. All right. So let's do Hulu headlines. Mm. Oh, and hold it. No, other thought. The very first sentence of last Monday's episode was Jason comes back. Yes. Yes. Those were the worst two headlines. Jason returns to poor Charles. Hmm. Yep. Okay. So on Monday, Carly reveals the news about Jason to Sonny. John and Anna continue their pursuit. Maxie and Spinelli try to resolve their issues. Sasha offers her support to Cody. On Tuesday, Drew confronts Carly. Jason asks for a favor. Sam is emotional. Finn assesses Heather. And Natalia surprises Blaze. Is it a no, surprise? It, right. It's not a surprise. We already, she was already there. Like, and that was it's surprise. not like she all suddenly became accepting. Right. So, okay. We'll get to that. Uh, Sunny, uh, Wednesday, Sunny fears Jason has changed. I think. <laughs> Michael is in shock. Selena shares information with Curtis. Drew blows off some steam. Jordan has doubts about her career. Ooh, do you think somehow Drew got tarot carded? <laughs> I like that that's a new word, tarot carded. Tarot carded. <laughs> On Thursday, seriously, though, think about it, because he's changed since he came back from Pentonville, which is fair. I mean, he got beat up for no reason. And- yeah. No, I think his change just came from his change. Okay. From, from what he went to. Yeah, mm-hmm. Thursday. Jason explains where he has been. Lois checks in on Sunny. John asks Carly for help. Sam has trouble hiding her suspicions. And Molly speaks to Anna about potential changes. I'll be honest, I kind of zoned out a lot this week. Or like, once I was in this week's episodes, I kind of started to zone. And then Friday, Heather gets medical information. Diane has a proposal for Alexis. Kevin reveals something to Marshall about his diagnosis. Jocelyn tries to stop Dex from leaving. And Nina humiliates Gregory. Oh, was I mad. (laughs) <laughs> you didn't like your good friend nina this week i've never been her biggest fan i can oh yeah this week she was acting like a little entitled like 12 year old she was what do you mean her this arguing, is what we agreed on and alexis her like, arguing mm-hmm. with joss i whenever uh she joss was like okay never mind and then she was like no wait and i was like really i understand that joss is an adult but She is a young adult. We've established that she's like 20. You're going to stand in the doorway and argue with a 20 year old and like try to make her sad because her boyfriend didn't tell her something or you're implying that her boyfriend's breaking up with her. Like, come on, Nina. Right. You're way too old for that. Ridiculous. It was. No, I felt, I felt like this week I wasn't as engaged either just because nothing I know people hate when I use the word filler, but I feel like it was a lot of filler just moving us along in the storylines. Like we knew they would have to address the fact that Jason is who they suspect of shooting Dante. And so how is everyone going to react to that? And how are they going to prosecute it? We knew there was going to be a conflict for Molly, a conflict for Anna, a conflict for everyone as to what, what they're thinking or whatever. And so it basically just ran through everyone saying, no, they don't think Jason did it other than Sam, which I thought was ridiculous that she's like, I'm just not sure, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be so angry at him if he shot the man that I love. Really? Like, yes, you'd be angry with him, obviously, but you don't know Jason better than that. Come on. Right. That you were at married least he to the man. in his right mind would not have done it. Right. 
Right. And for all the same reason, conclusion that maybe the rocks piled up on him caused some issues. Yes. Yes, exactly. And the fact that even Carly is saying Jason would respect the fact that Dante has been raising his son. He wouldn't be trying to hurt him. Or even if he was mad that you moved on, he would respect your decision of moving on because you guys weren't together whenever he left anyway. And now you're with Dante. Like, So yeah. real quick to Sam and Olivia after the birthday party. Sorry, I am fixing my sock because I haven't moved yet. My sock decided to like rearrange where the heel wasn't lined up on my foot, which is weird. <laughs> I'm wearing fuzzy socks. You know how that goes. Uh-huh. Um, so Olivia and Sam are talking about how cute Dante was when he was little and how Drew's reading the ugly duckling and like that was Dante's favorite and they're like oh Dante's such a good guy yes he is I want him to be something else maybe he could be a baseball coach but no he's a cop blah 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 Olivia says hold on I wrote it down where did it go I don't know if all my notes came through hold on she said something about you guys have been spending a lot of time together yeah, they live together. <laughs> right, right. Like, and they're raising and, three children together. Right. And she's like, do you think you're ever going to make it official? Where did that go? I think some of my notes did not come through. Hmm. Oh, well, not that. I was going to say, I feel like you know what you're going to say about that without your notes. Like, but It's just like, exactly like I just said, it's like you're living together. You're, you have a family together. Although I wish the boys had been, and Ryan and Jason. JD, <laughs> <laughs> you really have Jason on the mind. <laughs> I wish that they had watched this week solely because of TJ saying to Jordan, Dante is Christina's brother and brother in law, <laughs> except for <laughs> he's not her brother in law yet because they're not married. Right. Because they're just hanging out or whatever, according to Olivia. Right. <sighs> but that would have been so good. For them to yes. be like, wait a second, what? <laughs> uh, I didn't really care for the conversation between TJ and Jordan simply because none of this is new information. Nope. You knew whose family you were getting involved with. Right. Right. We didn't just find out yesterday that Sonny is Christina's father. So you and- knew that. And, and Sonny said like he was at the announcement of the fact that she was pregnant and he even made the joke that he's like kind of sort of a grandpa like this didn't just hit you right well also his own wife's dad although rick is an attorney the lansings are involved in the mob (laughs) okay her dad's an attorney who hid a pregnant woman in a secret room like hold on hold on hold on let's get this right here (laughs) where's the connection there where's the that was with Carly when he was dating Liz. Yes, but she was pregnant with Mor- Morgan? Was it Morgan? Hold on. No, it couldn't have been Morgan. There's not that many years between Morgan and Elizabeth. But was, she couldn't have been pregnant with Joss because why would Sonny have cared? Exactly. Oh, man. But yeah, Rick is not exactly squeaky clean attorney. Right, right. Exactly. Okay, hold on. Carly Benson at the time? Corinthos? Carly pregnancy kidnapped by Alcazar. No, kidnapped by Rick. Yes, because he wanted, <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> oh, she miscarried. Oh, okay. Okay. That's sad, but at least that makes sense. Okay. It was 2003. Okay. Mm, okay. But still, none of this is new information. It's not like God, I can't believe that was 2003. I know. We were just babies ourselves then. Oh, we were 21 and that baby would be 21. Oh, look at that. Oh, I was 21. Yeah, not we, you jerk. <laughs> Sorry, I always forget that you're older. Um, yeah, I just, I, I understand TJ's thoughts, but these are ones that he should have been having, I don't know, since he was 14 years old. <laughs> he should have had. The thoughts ahead of time and i'm not saying that you can't talk to your mother because you're supposed to talk to your mother but it just seems odd that they're coming out now like nothing new had happened they hadn't just come from another appointment where christina was like my baby or something like that right that would then have him start having these doubts about oh is christina too attached and what about her family being attached to blah 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 it was just kind of 
oh, mom, I was thinking today and suddenly all these things hit me that I should have been thinking about months ago because they were literally in my living room discussing it. I feel like some of the scenes were possibly released out of order or I was not paying attention. Oh, okay. When was Michael told that Jason was alive or did he discover that Jason was alive in the boathouse? I think he discovered Jason was alive in the boathouse. I don't remember anyone telling him. Okay. But he did not seem shocked. Yeah. No, he did. But he had just been discussing Jason with Sam at the hospital. Oh, had he? Okay, so I'm remembering it out of order. But yeah, because I wrote down Michael casually talking about Jason stuff with Sam and then surprised to see him in the boathouse. So I was like, wait, it's, I don't know. I think that they thought we would expect Michael to be surprised no matter what seeing him in the boathouse because it's still a surprise like oh we heard he fell off the bridge and of course that would be the thing that would kill jason so how is he in our boathouse right maybe more because danny was there that could be i liked that they brought danny into it though and that he got to help out and kind of show his assertiveness of like no this is my dad and i'd like to know what's going on and i'm not sure why everyone's trying to keep me away from this but i'm not a little kid and i can understand that my mom wants to be with her live-in boyfriend because it's not a casual relationship and i am should still be allowed to be concerned about my dad well especially where he's also concerned that his dad is the one who shot right you know where the but he swore on danny's life that he didn't the only thing that really interested me this week was whenever it showed john talking to jason and saying i have have all this information on racketeering charges which then makes you think it must be john that has the information and that is who uh jason was working for before they showed that scene i wanted it to be that whoever um whatever the person had to make jason do the things for him had a cure for brit so that we could bring brit back with a cure oh And I was like so excited for a minute, like, oh, that person has this cure for Brit. And that's why Jason had to do these bad things because he loves Brit. And then they show. No one's told her that she died yet. No one's told Jason. Sorry, I said her, but no one's told Jason. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she he probably thinks that she still just left town. I, I, I love your theory. I really, really do. That's what I wanted it to be. But then whenever they showed John talking to him, I was like, oh, okay. So this is going to be some big consp- conspiracy of where air quotes Jagger is a bad guy only when it comes to getting Sonny. Well, and so that's my question is what is Jason supposed to be doing? Like he has to, so we know that he touched um, Hamish. So Pikeman dude's dead now. Right. We know that he pushed Hamish so that he did not get Sonny. Right. How did they miss Sonny so many times before? Right. Um, Because Jason's just up there like every single time, like tapping him right before. Don't you think (laughs) the boss man would be like, you're not going up there anymore. We're just going to send him by himself. (laughs) Right. And why did you need, like Jason wasn't the gunman. They obviously located Sonny without Jason's help on the rooftop because anybody could know that Sonny was on the rooftop or would most likely be on the rooftop in a certain time span if you followed him at all during the like summertime everyone's on the rooftop at some point in time so okay he's on the rooftop you should have made that shot and hit sunny the fact that you didn't is a failure in your gunman not in the fact that you didn't know where sunny was going to be so why do you need jason there to say oh sunny's gonna be here but then you're still using the same gunman that missed and hit curtis well he would have missed Jay- or would have missed Sonny even if Jason hadn't booped his arm. Right. <laughs> Boop. Exactly. That's exactly what it looked like. Like, hey, buddy, I have a question. Boop, boop. Oh, sorry. I threw off your concentration. Yeah. I just, I, and I don't understand what, what is he supposed to be doing then? Like, what is, I have to complete, and we just did this. I have to complete the mission. Right. I have to complete the mission. And, and now that what Drew, or, not Drew. It was Jake. That it was is Jake, Drew? but it was Drew. Yeah. Okay. Th- that's wasn't like everything. He had to complete the mission. Well, wasn't he the one that was like the the contract, like secret contracted yeah. by the government? Yeah. And wasn't that what Dex did too for a while? Like, how many secret workers for the government do we have that are just randomly killing people? 
Well, that's a really good question, actually. <laughs> NGH land. <laughs> well, but seriously, think about it. That's not yeah. really, um, yeah, I'm, I can't find, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that it was, Drew was the one that kept saying, I have to complete the mission. Yeah. Drew or Dante. We are wrong together. Drew or Dante. <gasps> it was Dante. It was Dante. With the clicky. Was it yep, Dante with, with the clicky, clicky pen? pen? With the clicky pen. Yep. <laughs> Now we're playing Clue in the kitchen with the clicky pen. That would be a good version of Clue. We could make so many versions of Clue. I know. So. Um, oh, I showed Erica the Guess Who board. Oh, <laughs> like this is play? awesome. <laughs> She's like, I want to play Guess Who every day now. Yeah. Well, I still have to laminate the rest of the cards. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. So that was Dante. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, the only part that really interested me was that part of si or with Jason because I thought it was going to come back to Brit and then it didn't. And I was like, whatever. I'm uninterested now. Yeah. Man, that would have been so good. It would have been even better. I don't want to say that I wish he had shot Sonny, but I wish <laughs> that maybe Sonny's arm like didn't just graze hit. Like what if he right. actually shot shot in the arm and yes. Sonny had been rushed to in general hospital and they didn't know and whatever like he had cracked his head on one of those boxes oh, so he was wait. unconscious pause and that was my favorite part of last week's episode whenever jd and ryan asked what general hospital was called yes yes general hospital like, what <laughs> it's it's general hospital sorry go ahead no yes. no no, so no, no. Go, that, that was a good go one general hospital to get seen right but it's not poor charles no it's just general hospital <laughs> and then you said they also have mercy and JD's like, oh, that's creative. I'm like, we literally have a mercy hospital. <laughs> right. There's a mercy hospital in Grey's Anatomy as well. Yep. Which, oh, who mentioned this week that they know, oh, Heather Weber gets all of her medical advice from Grey's Anatomy. Yes. Yes. I laughed. I was like, me too, Heather. I agree. They did a lot of real life pulp cultural culture references this week. What they, did that? they did the Ghostbusters. Yeah. Okay. So maybe two. I was going to say, was there something else? The Ghostbusters was just a given. Like, you can't say that line without saying Ghostbusters at the end. But did they have to pay for the rights? You know, like, that's the thing is, is that mm -hmm. phrase, whatever. So, oh, so if Sonny had actually been shot, like, cracked his head on one of the boxes, was unconscious, Jason's thinking, okay, it's done. And then he's like, okay, cool, we're going to get the thing for Brit. And then right. he finds out that oh, Brit's dead. Yeah. And then he would have been like, what the heck? I just had Sonny killed. But then Sonny doesn't die. Right, right, right. Because what on earth could Jason agree to Sonny's going like, to die? Like, apparently, no. like, this is like the mission is he's going to die. What could it be? What could it be? And Jason makes it sound like they said, I have to do these tasks for them. And I said, okay. And then, ooh, I was surprised that the final task was kill Sonny. Like, Jason wouldn't ask for all that information up front. I need a detailed list of exactly what I have to do before I get what I want. He's not just going to leave it up to, oh, you can just keep assigning me things. The only person he would do that with would be Sonny. Right. Because he'd be like, okay, don't need to know the end game. I just, I will go do this thing for you. That's the right. only person. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. He'd be like, um, no, what's the reason why? Why are we doing this? Yeah. So what could it be? Oh, I guess Monica's back from her. Oh, yeah, we're all over the place. Monica's back from her conference because question, how many first aid kits do you have? Uh, I used to have one. I don't have any anymore. Okay. But at the quarter mains, there's like 16 of them, apparently. So Monica had, Danny was like, I'll go get the first aid kit. Oh, do you want me to get Monica's bag? And Jason's look when he's like, was Monica up there? That was, that was, that was sweet. I also didn't know that nurses have medical bags. I think that that's, that makes sense. Okay. That one didn't surprise me so much as then, but then Carly's like, I'm going to go. Oh, when he looked at Carly. Yeah. That was good. That was good. I really wish she legit did not know that he was alive when Anna and John came over. I know. I wish that had, that had been true. And then she saw the footage and was like, oh my gosh, that does look like Jason. Wait, he was going to, and then everything that she said, you know, he wouldn't shoot Sonny, like all those things. Right. Um, and then he could have come out after they left. See, I'm just rewriting this. Mm -hmm. Then after they left, he could have come out from wherever he was hiding. 
but that would have given us too more too much time to talk to him. We needed to keep it short and sweet so that everyone can walk around this week and be like, "Oh, geez, did he actually shoot Dante?" No, right, that's true. But oh, and then she had to tell him that Bobby died. Yeah, he looked no. Oh. Yeah, didn't think to just tear off the band aid with that one and just get Britt out of the way too. Right, right. But that was sweet. Whenever he was talking this week about. Uh, how willow is a good nurse just like michael's grandma and then told the story about the first time that he held michael and i was like oh yes yes, remember that that was just last week also i feel like that was (sighs) it was really really sweet there was a lot of sweet it i mean it it wasn't like it was a bad week there was sweet moments between like christina talking to uh molly about her and Allison and how she feels and about the mom being a jerk and how she found them in bed and blah, blah, blah. So that was like heartfelt and fine. And it was nice to see all those different conversations. I just feel like it didn't do much for moving the storylines along. And the one that they seemed focused on was this whole Marshall needs to go talk to the doctor that diagnosed him. And I really am not trying to be insensitive in any way. But I don't feel like his misdiagnosis had anything to do with the color of his skin. Maybe the fact that he was poor or whatever. But back back then, people were ignorant to mental health. They had very few diagnoses. If you like got a few things on the checklist, that was the diagnosis they gave you. And people are still misdiagnosed a gazillion times today. So an article on from May 7th, 2020 through counseling today regarding racial disparities and misdiagnosis, black men, for example, are overdiagnosed with schizophrenia four times more likely than white men. Oh, okay. Well, okay. underdiagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and mood disorder. Okay. Well, I'm glad that there is that statistic. And again, I'm in no way trying to downplay the devastation that comes with that, but I don't understand what talking to the doctor would have done. I'm curious about the, so the way that I found this article was because I was actually more, not more interested because I just, I am interested in that stuff, you know, and right. what the history right. is. I mean, and when I read that, like four times more likely, that is that's insane. And right. if that's today, what was it? Right. 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 You know, and especially with lack of broader diagnoses or, mm-hmm. I mean, autism's original foundation was the diagnosis was close to schizophrenia, which it's not now. Right. Right. Um, But what I was actually looking for was, and what I don't wish I had hoped to have found, but the shock therapy was, that's what I was looking for was, okay, well, how often was that done? Right. Right. Yeah. That was devastating. That part of it was devastating that Marshall was like, yeah, when I said I couldn't afford my pills, he was like, Oh, I'll do shock therapy for only $800 a session. Right. You shouldn't just be handing out shock therapy to anybody and you shouldn't be ripping them off. I was, I think that what they're going to possibly uncover is possibly that this doctor did target that demographic to test, to do as part of testing and Um, I'm not, I'm not opposed to them looking into how he got this diagnosis and the fact that he's getting led to heaven, who is like, listen, this person is well known, but not for good good reasons, blah, blah, blah. I'm a hundred percent behind, like do the research, find out what a jerk this guy was. But the idea of confronting the guy is beyond me like i know he's deceased but before we found out he was deceased you're gonna drive to you've already said he's living in like this fancy schmancy old folks home you're gonna find a way to meet with him hoping that he's not um you know suffering from his own decline in health and can actually carry on a conversation do you really think he's gonna sit there and be like oh yeah i totally misdiagnosed you on purpose because that was what i was doing back then it helped me write this book and now i'm a bestseller blah 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 like the doctor was never going to admit that right so seeing him would have done nothing but get you more aggravated and agitated so i found something through the national institute of health from 2012 I'm not going to read the entire article, so I really hope I'm not. Um, But the background for it is Black Americans with depression were less likely to receive 
electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, than whites during the 70s and 80s. This pattern was commonly attributed to the treatment of blacks in lower quality hospitals where ECT was unavailable. We investigated whether the racial difference in receiving ECT persists, and if so, where it arises from lesser ECT availability or from lesser ECT use within hospitals conducting the procedures. But it looks like this was okay. Like yeah, like I said, I'm totally like the more recent. If if Kevin says like, yeah, he's a bad guy, and there's a bunch of other people that have come together and said he's a bad guy, and you can you know sue the hospital or do whatever, blah blah blah. Like, sure, Marshall, go ahead, get on that wagon. Like, I'm not saying that you weren't caused so many years and so much pain and all of that. I just don't think that the doctor is where you're going to get the answers that you're looking for. So that whole idea just seemed like a waste of time to me. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Now I'm stuck down that rabbit hole. No, get out of the rabbit hole. I'm trying to think what else happened this week. That was whatever. That was one of my about- favorite, not favorite parts, but when I was a psych major up until, I mean, I went through my junior year learning all that crazy stuff that they used to do and how it seemed like that was the right thing to do. Right. Right. You know, like heroin and Coke used to be medicine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we learn, but I am, I am curious as to what they find. And I just hope that they make it an inspiring story of, yeah, this sucks, but now we have the right diagnosis. Let's move forward. Instead of, it seems to me like Marshall himself was accepting of the misdiagnosis and ready to move on from that. But that Curtis and Aunt Stella are the ones that are like, but aren't you really mad about it? Aren't you really mad? Don't you want to see, see why you're so Stella, mad about it? I thought Stella was more on the, but that was different back then. Right, right. And again, not saying it wasn't a huge injustice because it absolutely was, but what can anyone do about it now? The doctor's dead, whether he'd misdiagnosed you on purpose or not on purpose. If you can get to the point where you're moving on from it, that is better than just sitting here and dwelling in, man, I'm so mad, which seems like what they're trying to get Marshall to feel like. Maybe Curtis is just mad because he missed out on having a dad all those years because of it. Well, then I would like him to own up to that and be like, I'm angry. I would like answers because I missed out on my dad instead of trying to make Marshall have more regrets than he already does. They might be, they might turn this into where, so they go find the medical records and they're upstairs in the hospital. We don't know where, but they're up there. They find other people who were misdiagnosed and they let them know maybe. That would be good. Okay. If they started it like as a whole, like reach out to these people and get everyone the proper help, that would be awesome. Yeah. I'll approve that. That gets my seal of approval. Okay. Um, Oh, I was disappointed in Joss this week. Um, being Carly's daughter and I, I love Carly. So I mean the appropriate amount of disrespect, I guess, from this, but Carly would have taught her daughter. Carly's daughter would know that sleeping with a man does not keep him. Yeah. This is the second time that Joss has slept with him with Dex and then been like, but you're not staying now. No, no, he's not. (laughs) Nope. One uh, one amazing sex session does not change his whole life. I'm sorry. He's still at risk to be killed. He's he's leaving. Yep. So I I was just annoyed by that. Like you were just bragging. I don't know if it was before or after that, that she was bragging to Nina about, yes, I am my mother's daughter, blah, blah, blah. Well, your mother would have taught you that that just is not the way you keep a man. She's, I believe Nina was after that because then that, oh yeah, because then that's when... Nina said, oh, well, did you tell her about the time that I saw you coming out of Cyrus for nose? Mm-hmm. And Joss would not have yes, jumped under the sheets with him after that. Yep, you're yeah. right. So, and yeah. then Drew broke up with Carly out of nowhere. Right. And then right. he starts telling, who did he tell? He was talking to someone later. And, he's like, and he's like, she already has. Like, you never even give her a second to, because he said something about, you know, she always chooses Jason and she already has. You came and you said, I'm breaking up with you because you even saw Jason. Right. And you asked her in last week's episodes, you said to her, did you see Jason? And she said, yes, he came here. And you said, what happened? And I said, he came here. He told or he showed me he was shot. I tried to help him, 
and then the cop showed up with a warrant and he left like she didn't say no i didn't see him she didn't say no he didn't have a bullet hole she didn't say any like she did not lie and he's like well you didn't call me first no because she was kind of in the middle of something she was tired and and what was she gonna say to you i have no other information because we didn't discuss dante but by the way jason showed up I would have waited to have that conversation in person too. And I'm not saying that if Jason was now going to be there to be a choice for her to be in a romantic relationship, that she would not pick him over Drew, but we're nowhere close to that yet. And he's like, Nope, I'm I'm a businessman. I've learned to cut my losses. (laughs) Okay. You're not that good of a businessman. If you don't know what insider trading is. (laughs) And you just lost the woman that you say that you love for no reason other than your pride. Yeah. She's never denied that Jason came first and would always come first. It just happened to be that you thought he was dead and now he's not, but she's still not in any position to pick him over you other than the fact that he showed up and she gave him a bandaid. Right. Sorry. My cat was hitting a bag that is on the bed and the noise was annoying. No, that's okay. Uh, What else? Oh, how's Diane going to get, uh, and then why now? <laughs> You're like reading my mind. Alexis, how's Diane going to get Alexis back in good standing? And if she could do that, why has Alexis not been in good standing for all these years? I don't know. But that okay. was just, I guess they brought in a new journalist who's a gossip journalist. And that's where Nina was like, we decided we needed this. And Alexis was like, uh-uh, you decided. And Nina's shocked. Yes. Ugh. Hmm. Yeah, I was I was liking that Nina break. Now that she's back, they had to make her even worse for the small times we saw her. Well, and she printed about Diane and Robert. Yeah. Although I did love when they went to the hospital to get Heather Weber, and Robert leaves, and he's like, "I missed out on breakfast in bed because of this." <laughs> yes. Yes. I guess that's really the only other storyline that we didn't hit on that was major is Heather's now going to get a hip replacement and she's being all weird about it. Like I can't make this decision here, Laura, you have to decide for me. Well, and they did the math and she's like, Oh, I really might be her next of kin. Right. But I loved when she couldn't remember all of her names. (laughs) I did like that. I did like that. They're like, what's your legal name? And she's like, uh, let me start listing them all off. Um, but no, whenever they're like, what do you want to do? And the doctor explained it. I can understand her saying to Laura, can you explain it to me in layman terms? Because he used all the medical jargon. But instead, she's like, I just can't make this decision here, Laura. What do you want to do? That's no. Right. I, I mean, I know I, I've never known anyone that's had poisoning from their hip replacement. I know that is a thing. But. It just seems like, once again, Heather is playing the part instead of actually being sick whenever she's asking Laura for that type of help. So she got cobalt poisoning because of her hip replacement from a skiing accident 20 years ago. Yeah. Although I do find it interesting because they did say she's always been a little nutty, but never a serial killer. Yeah. So is that how we're explaining away the hook that Heather suddenly just became a serial killer and not just... Yeah. Yeah. Heather, <laughs> you know, yeah, I liked so whenever she, Robert was like melatonin poison, and they were like, No, that's not what word they said. And then, so they decided that it's best that she go to San Quentin Federal. Yep, and I already knew this because I did a deep dive into prisons a while ago um, <laughs> <laughs> for personal reasons. I'm fine. <laughs> I just had a lot of questions about something. (laughs) Did you know that San Quentin actually had a prisoner gift shop where the prisoners created items like art and everything, and they were sold at the gift shop? No. Oh, that's funny. It closed though. I think, I think it closed because of the pandemic. Um, But I think it was like 80% of the proceeds actually went back to the prisoner and they could use it as part of like their commissary. They could send it home. Like they could send it to other people. And all I could think of was she gets to create all of her paintings and then sell them. So maybe Heather right. will, re- will reopen the San Quentin. I gift hope shop. so. Cause then we could buy a BLT painting. Yes. We'll just that's get my son to make you. one. I say that's what I'm getting you for Christmas. This is a BLT, BLT painting. painting. <laughs> yeah. Where was it? 
it was the handicraft shop. No affiliation with the prison is required to enter the store, which is open from noon until 2.30. Exact cash only. But it doesn't say when it closed. This was in 2019, was this article. That is so cool. So yeah, it was 400 and a sign on the store store notes that of 750 prisoners currently on death row, 430 participate in the prison's hobby program. Wow. Yeah. And that's what you got to learn this week. All right. Well, thank you. I, I, I had a gift shop. Run. I do. I do enjoy the educational value of our podcast. Thank you. But I really don't think there's anything else. Did you have any oh, other notes? Like- Anna and Molly just discussing. I do like how Anna is really struggling with this. Yeah. She's like, I have a lot of conflicts of interest with him, but she's definitely on team. Uh, he wouldn't have shot Dante. No, you wouldn't shoot Dante. Like, like Carly said, he would know that it was Dante and he wouldn't shoot a cop either. So there's just so many reasons there. How do you feel about the fact that Jagger is ultimately the one that's, I mean, do you think that he's the top or do you think there's somebody else at the top? Oh, I bet there's someone else at the top, but he's definitely involved willingly. And that makes me angry because not that all people don't change and characters don't change and whatever, but Jagger would not go after Sonny like that. Okay. And he has repeatedly told everyone that he is in town to save Sonny, to protect him. Right. And I do kind of believe that in a weird, weird, I don't know. Did you know that he, Karen was only his high school girlfriend? What do you mean? When Sonny said, go ahead, tell them. He says, Karen was my high school girlfriend. No, oh, with once. no more like emotion behind it. Yeah. It was no, never. Karen was my ex-wife. We met when she was in high school. She blah, she's, blah, 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 blah. She's she blah, blah, the one that inspired me to go be a better man than what I was being. Right. And she was yeah. going through a rough patch and she wound up becoming a dancer at the Paradise Lounge. And then, you know, this, that, and the other thing. It was just Karen was my high school girlfriend. Karen was my high school girlfriend and she was underage and Sunny slept with her. That's like all we were supposed to get from that. And it was like, no, that's not. Mm-mm. I do wish that Sunny had even said, though, Karen is why he refuses to deal in drugs anymore. Right. Right. And you have to remember that as sleazy as it is, no one no adult should be sleeping with someone under the age of 18 he it's not like he was a 50 year old man sleeping with a 17 year old like he was much younger than also so it didn't have the same the same ick factor as when they say it now and you think of like funny now sleeping with a high school student and you're like oh god no right well yeah so, because i mean sunny met brenda when she was in high school right Right. And there's a whole lot of problems with the 90s. <laughs> and he, right. And he wasn't drugging Karen to manipulate her into right. sleeping with him. Yeah. He was giving her drugs. Yes. In the end, he was getting what he wanted because then she would like loosen up and go dance and stuff. But he, his original intent with giving her the drugs was you're going through a hard time. This will help take your mind off of it. Right. He wasn't roofing her. He wasn't, yeah, you're right. No. That's- yeah yeah and again like we've talked about it a thousand times on the show like yes the end result is still illegal and not okay but intent does matter in day-to-day life he was not being a sleazeball like oh let me drug you it does not and i sent you (laughs) that tiktok of the guy who's getting a divorce because he and his wife worked from home during COVID and he overheard some business decisions being made. And so he decided to go buy some stock in it and the SEC decided to check him out for it. And now she lost her job. They're getting divorced and he's probably going to jail. But his intent was to make money illegally, not to help her out. He should go to jail. I think his intent was to make money. Whether or not he knew it was illegal was never mentioned. He thought it would be a good idea for them to be able to use this information for personal gain, which is the same thing Carly did. No. Yes. Yes. It Carly's is. was to support Michael. And that is personal gain for her. Okay. Yep. Seeing my kids happy makes me like, gives me personal <laughs> satisfaction. Oh, Jason has a tattoo sleeve now. We didn't see that yet. Did we? Yeah, we did. No. Because. Did we? Yeah, because he took off his thing and Jason, or Michael said, what happened to you? No, that must have been one of those parts that I wasn't paying 100% attention to. 
And then, oh, uh, Finn finding the vape on the ground when Jake stood up. Oh, yeah, that was nice. I like that. Liked was a that. really good, oh, Elizabeth, the second that Jake walks out of the room and she's like, oh, my gosh, that was so difficult. I just can't handle this right now. Yeah. That was true momming. It was true momming and it was true stepdad, boyfriend, whatever you want to call him, where he was like, wait, did I overstep? Because I wasn't. And she's like, no, you made it easier because he would talk to you in a way that he wouldn't talk to me. So, And I guess Aiden had been talking to him about Tobias and Liz was shocked because he was like, oh my gosh, please tell me that you knew. Yeah, that was like, no, I'm just more surprised that he's willing to talk to you about it. And I like that they had the discussion of, okay, I don't know. I feel like when it comes to a health and safety thing, a legit health and safety thing. Right. It's okay to talk to other people's kids about it and be like, right. Yeah, no, it's that you need to not be doing this. Yes, exactly. Where Jake really tried. He lied once and Finn looked at him and was like, you know, I'm not buying that. Right. Right. And Jake didn't keep trying. He was like, okay, well, here's the deal. I took it because I don't want my friend to be hurting himself. And I was just getting rid of it. And I just didn't. I think the, Finn could tell that he was being honest. It wasn't like, oh crap, I have to cover and be like, oh, that's my friends. I'm holding it for him. Blah, right. blah, blah. He was like, no, seriously, I, I took it. Right. So, oh, I did like when they had to figure out talking with Rocco and Danny, because if Danny's dad is the one who shot Rocco's dad, right, it's going to be a little bit of a tense household. A little, mm-hmm. you know, just a little. So, yeah. Maybe just a bit. <laughs> Oh, we forgot to talk about the, when, wait, when did Sonny get shot? Was that last week or was that this week? That was last week. Okay. But Selena's who went to Curtis and was like, hey. Oh, yeah. And I Curtis think. was like, I need more information because that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. So do you think Selena's turning on Sonny now? I think that Selena's a smart businesswoman. She's trying to do whatever she needs to do to get what she wants. And that poker game made her a lot of money. Who was it? Marshall was not backing down. He's like, I'm not scared of whatever that is like to her bodyguard. I was like, (laughs) okay, right. Okay. Good job, Marshall. (gasps) Sonny and Ava almost kissed. Was that this week? Last week. Oh, but still. Oh, I was getting the vibes that they're going to try to put uh, Drew and Jordan together whenever he was boxing. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, oh. I don't know, something the way that she said, I'm like, like, oh, they're going to end up in bed as a stress reliever here in a minute. We need Jordan to stop having stress relief and to get some. Yeah. An actual relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. She deserves better. Well, one of the headlines was she was doubting her career or was thinking, what was it? It was something about. She did like explain why she was still like in the game now or whatever. But I think. That it was more just that same doubt that everybody had of like, we don't know what to think because we know Jason and this isn't him. She has doubts about her career. Well, because I think also she doesn't have the same access to information that she did when she was not deputy mayor, Mm -hmm. which is just weird because I feel like you would have more information, maybe not inside the PlayStation information at that moment. Right. Oh, Hold it. Molly talking to Anna about, well, here's what we're thinking is happening is that Jason's working under the blah, 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 blah. Isn't it the police station tells the attorney what's happening and then they decide not the attorney goes, well, so here's what we're putting together. I think she was just trying to talk to her as a friend at that point. Cause, cause she said, are we charging these all together? Or are we charging these as separate crimes? And so I think that she was asking Anna that question, but then also being like, well, we're kind of thinking this and this, like, is that where you guys are? At? But See, I, I definitely took she it was, as she was coming she in more. saying, we're not waiting for information. This is what we're speculating. And this is what we're going with. If law and order has taught us anything, I feel like it's really. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that they can charge it without the police telling what to charge it. it it's kind of like not having a case without a like defendant or whatever right or without e- whoever wants to bring the charges right so plaintiff thank you <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> i am a little sleep deprived today my brain is not working <laughs> all in all the, I, I think that that is it i did think it was fair for heather to be freaking out over seeing kevin i do too yeah 
Yeah, she was fine up until she started asking Laura inappropriate questions. And then it was like, okay. <laughs> that was so weird. Yeah. <laughs> I know. The look on Laura's face. And I was waiting for the obvious answer of, I didn't have intimate relations with Ryan. So I can't compare intimate relations between Ryan and his brother. Right. And Heather's and just I'm like, well, gonna... let's just figure it out. Uh, right. And she's like, mm, yeah, no. Nope not gonna get in that discussion with you no well and then laura cracked heather over the head with uh something because she was going after cyrus was that last yeah that That was last week yeah okay (laughs) oh well i did not confuse the weeks too much until just like the last 10 minutes you are good you're good but i think that we have it all covered reality check so tell us about your wonderful trip or what you want to share about your reality check Nine days is a really long time. Ten days. It was nine nights. Ten days. Is a really long time to not be home. Um, it's the longest I've ever been away from my husband. Unfortunately, it's not the longest I've ever been away from my kids, especially where my son's at school now. But right. I mean, since my daughter was six months old, their dad and I have had shared custody. So they go for the week with him and you know how it works. So, right. but it was just, it was weird. I had a great time in both places in Massachusetts. We had, it was like a leadership retreat for one of my women's networking groups. And it was uh-huh. just nice. There was only 18 of us. So it was really nice for it to just be small and um, really got to know some ladies that I probably on other trips probably would not have really had the opportunity to get to know as well. Oh, nice. Um, and then New Orleans was fun. I really like that city. It's it's a good city. Uh, I feel like it's a good weekend city that you really could just go down for like a long weekend and have a good time. We did a lot of touring. We rode the streetcar. I'm pretty sure we rode every streetcar their entire route. <laughs> just because. Oh, wow. That's just awesome. Because, because you can get on and off. So yeah, like we wound up randomly finding a park. We had beignets. We had hurricanes at Pat O'Brien's. We went to the World War II Museum, which I did not know was there. And that was really hard. That was the first thing we did Saturday morning. And then we had a cruise that also had like a jazz band and it was dinner. So we oh, kind fun. of three birds with one stone on Saturday night. It was cold though. And then we just did a lot of touristy stuff. We did like the hop on, hop off bus. Mm-hmm. And we learned stuff at our convention. And <laughs> we closed Tuesday night with a private concert from Christina Aguilera. That's crazy. So that was fun. Yeah, that's she, crazy. It was good. I mean, she did a whole hour. Wow. So it was really like, it was a full set. So that's amazing. It was a good time. And then we traveled home Wednesday and I'm trying to figure out how to function again. <laughs> how about you? Um, My week was pretty boring, but then yesterday and today was Madeline's second dance competition. And so we had to be there. She had to be there by 4.30-ish yesterday. And then we had to be there at 7.15 this morning. So it was actually nice. We went, it was in uh, Johnstown. And like, mm-hmm. I've driven through Johnstown and gone to Girl Scout camp there before, but I've never stayed in Johnstown. Yeah. And so um, we stayed at their Holiday Inn and it had a restaurant in the hotel. And so we were like, she wanted to swim. That was the reason we booked the hotel was that was the only one that had an uh, indoor swimming pool. So we booked the hotel and then um, she wanted to have time to swim. So we ate there and they had a deal going on for two people for 50 bucks and you got a bottle of wine and you got uh, an appetizer. So we had lobster bisque and then you had uh, um, your meal. And so we got uh, pos- or seafood fettuccine. And then you got to pick a dessert. And I was like, this is a deal and a half. And then Madeline. Amazing. Yeah, it was. And it was so good. Like the food was so good. And Madeline. Yeah, Madeline got to eat for free um, off the kids menu because we were staying there. And so it was like, this is such a good deal. Like we, you know, we paid what we would have paid to eat anywhere different um, especially because we don't eat meat on Friday for the whole Lent thing. And so that limited a million choices. So it was perfect that it had all these options and it was delicious. And Madeline still had time to swim. So it was, it was good. nice. And she did really good on her competition and we were done early. So I still had time to come back here to 
record with you because I have to work tomorrow, which is sucky, but yeah. Yeah. Being an adult. It should be so. should be considered a, a holiday for me. I am Irish. I should have the holiday off. This is another one of those Amanda rules. I think that I should get to celebrate and have the day off to drink some green beer. So, well, I'm 85%. That's not well, then you should have your green beer too. What are you doing? Oh, green wine. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so that is my reality. That's fun. Uh, so yeah, I guess join us on Thursday as we talk more about the Woo Mob family. Not the Woos, just the Woo Mob family. Have a good week. <laughs> And we'll meet you with the beer. Bye. See, you get it done all at once, guys. <laughs> yep, exactly. That's why I like hesitated. I'm like, what am I supposed to say this time? Well, and that's the thing too. JD filled in for you one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He knew this. All right. Anyway, right. we'll meet you at the pier. <laughs> Have a good week. Bye. <laughs> If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com.